Hey guys, this is Manak, your Silbro. So uh, today we are going to show you a particular, you know, export or, you know, the output of a structural drawing file. Actually, I've also uh, made a video on the, you know, your uh, detailing part of it uh, in RCTC. So in the same file, I'm going to show you the output file. So basically, uh, every young uh, uh, structural engineer or civil engineer who aspires to be a building consultant uh, they want to know how you know you you know we present a structural drawing there are various formats people give in various formats so i'll show you uh, my current format which i give to my clients uh, so that you can uh, you know observe and also make a format uh, of uh, yourself okay so i'll just uh, show you that okay so uh, first of all you will have the Mm, no foundation plan as we have here so the building was pile foundation if you go by the test code then uh, under all piles you have minimum three number of uh, under all columns you have minimum three number of piles but i've given two here uh, because it's a residential building and uh, you know technically uh, two pile was passing except uh, in three columns uh, so that's why in, for the economical uh, considerations i've given so these are the uh, pile cap uh, you know your layout and uh, in the pile and the pile cap layout you'll also find the uh, sizes of the pile cap depth of the pile cap and reinforcement the two, you know you know the, uh, you have the bottom reinforcement and also the top reinforcement so you have the reinforcement for that and all piles are 500 mm dia and 10 meter deep from the you know ground level so this is the uh, pile depth and dia which is as for the soil test report now uh, another thing uh, this is the column layout and this is very important because first they will uh, when they'll start the work they'll clean the site they will do the topographical survey and after that first thing there will be the marking of the columns by to station or by manually so most cases they will do manually in some cases they will do by to station as all well uh, but the main thing is that you should have you know this uh, these points which you which you uh, need to consider that why i have given this 75 along this side so 75 along this side means the you know the, the beam or the wall is actually getting flushed along the left side so that's why c2 size is different than c1 so definitely when it is coming from top to bottom so it is in the middle of c2 so if you see the size of c2 it is a uh, 315 to 350 of 350 is 175 so the grid line is actually at 175 but when it comes to c1 C1, uh, the outermost uh, part is a distance of 75. So the beam is flushed at the left side. Similarly, you'll find sim uh, the same thing for the horizontal as well as the vertical also. So these are the small things. If you make even minor mistakes while drawing, then it can cause you know very uh, huge mistake at the site. So while giving this uh, you know column layout plan, it's very essential that we you know just overlap the beams and all and check again and again very CPU detail. Uh, even I used to make mistakes when I was starting. So it's very, uh, you know, this is very important that you make this uh, properly, especially when you have, you know, different sizes of columns and practically always you will have different sizes of columns. Okay. Not, it is not some of your school projects or college projects where you have the same size of columns. Practically you will have different sizes of columns. So the, that's why you have the, the details considered and you have the central zone, this zone, zone one and zone two. So what is the zone and zone two? This is explained here. Zone and zone two as per code is actually if this is L then L by four. So I have taken some approximation and uh, almost L by four I have taken zone one and zone two. So this is three three five zero taken one thousand and one thousand is zone one. So uh, what happens near uh, the near the in the zone one that is near the end that is more uh, amount of shear force. Uh, so so the you know these uh, ties these uh, you know secondary reinforcement or ties which are used in the columns. So their spacing is less. And in the central zone, there is uh, less um, less uh, possibility of uh, shear force, and uh, you know, so that that's why uh, in the in the middle we have larger spacing, can afford larger spacing. So that's why it is given, and all the design you will find in the uh, software part or CDC part. And pile cap, pile cap like footing, it is below the ground level. Okay, one point five below the ground level. So how they how they will construct it? So they will construct the by pile from the uh, from the NGL from the ground level. And uh, and after all the piles are constructed, they will break it up to the top of the pile cap. So they will break the pile. This is called pile cap breaking. And after that, they will make the pile cap. Okay. So this is the uh, pile cap, and uh, we have the column and all uh, the pile details are also given here. In the section is given, and uh, you will find the pile details here. A section. See, 500 mm pile are been used as per the soil test report, and uh, this uh, 400 mm will be the internal uh, dia 
of the pile if you consider you know 50 mm cover in both sides and 8 bars of 60 mm will be used and the stirrup or the ties sorry in the pack yellow is a pilot to tie since it's a uh, it's it's a compression member so eight or uh, eight um, tie, ties will be used the spacing of 150 center to center so these zones are mentioned so uh, like this and uh, after that okay this I can see this pile also mentioned, foundation depth also mentioned, and the reinforcement in this uh, uh, pile cap PC1 is also mentioned here. And this is the plan of the pile cap, so, so that if you make the column, then you can also actually adjust the pile cap also. So similarly, for all the, you know, this uh, pile caps, these foundation details are given, because you can see in, uh, in, uh, in which level of detail which has been given here. So it's very important you do the detailing of your drawings properly so that anyone who can, you know, just, uh, it can be the engineer, even the, uh, you know, the laborers, which, you know, the workers at the site, construction workers, uh, who, who there are many construction workers who can read drawings, for men, some example, who leads the, uh, you know, team masons, they can read drawings and even they can understand from this uh, drawing. Okay, so uh, it's very important to keep the uh, drawing in detail. So uh, if you can make uh, this uh, better than uh, this uh, presentation as well, or minimum, or you have to give this one, try to keep it. Okay, so this is the plane beam layout, and the plane beam layout, you can see which uh, areas are the flushed. So actually, before when you make this uh, column layout also, in mind or before in draft, you have the plane beam layout actually but if i put it after yeah, after it you can see the flush locations now matching exactly uh wherever we have the flush the, the column is flush in the up, upwards here so for example in this case so it is 150 here so like this you find the uh, flush locations etc and then the plane view layout the two sizes are there and uh, you know i try to keep the size as simple as possible obviously if you design in software there will be many number of beams and 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 don't confuse me. You can give many number of sizes in commercial projects because there are many engineers who will execute the project. And you know, I have also worked in commercial projects as a site engineer. Also, I've worked. So there there are different uh, various sizes. But uh, what happens in the residential projects? If you give grouping, then it's easier for the message to execute because there are less less number of people supervising. So if anyway, the message will try to you know just. Uh, uh, simplify the thing so more simplify version you give it's better for uh, residential projects at least okay for commercial uh, projects for government projects for school and anything you can give uh, you know this uh, number of uh, you know if you have a good detailing software you can give as per if you have the 10 number of beam no problem you should know if you can give that but i prefer to you know just group it because uh, that is not much that is not much a, a difference economically and the thing is simpler Okay, for instance, uh, I'll explain simpler for instance, I could give 20 mm bars and uh, make some bars as extra, 60 mm bars and make some bars as extra. Instead, I uh, prefer to give this arrangement. So this comes with experience. And now uh, you can see here also, in uh, there is HT1 and HT2. So in beams, you, you again, at the support, there is more, uh, you know, moment. So, you know, this, uh, in, at the center, there is less. So, uh, you know, you can give the, you know, sorry, not the moment shear force. So uh, at the at this at the support that uh, you know the shear force is more. So in you know, near the support, the you know the spacing of stirrups is less. HT one. So HT one portion is marked here, and HT one portion is also the you know this uh, you know taken as L by three. Okay, L by three is also the uh, zone of the extra extra reinforcement if you are providing. But in plain beam, to keep it simple, I have not provided any extra reinforcement. All the you know the required reinforcement I provided equal or more. Here, so the provided HT is more or equal, you know, equal to the required HT in all the cases. So here you can I uh, use this and uh, one and two section you can just uh, see here uh, in this one and two section. This is the two fifteen to three three fifty bar, two twelve bars at twenty five mm at the top, two bars at twenty five mm at the bottom. So like this we have made. Similarly, you can see this. Uh, this is the uh, these are the other uh, plain beam sections. So as you can see, this takes time. But if you give this drawing in detail, it really helps out uh, the uh, you know the the persons who are executing it. So, and suppose you are giving ST one here, so uh, he has to calculate every time L by three, L by three. But if he has written the distance, if the distance is written here, you can see okay, this is a uh, you know one to seven. So he will just go here and uh, look at the layout here, and uh, he will see where is a. So uh, my A127 means this this uh, this particular line of beam. So you'll just when you'll just uh, do the rod binding, you'll all do all this together. 
obviously in single line. So you'll see, okay, 1200 from here, I have to provide the stays facing 125, then 150. So then there is, it is more probable to do, rather than uh, if I just no, not give this and just write L by three, then you will not do it. So it is common human logic, okay? So that's why you need to give all the detail properly if you want to execute the project in proper manner, okay? As simple as that. So uh, similarly, we have the root beams also. So obviously the root beam sizes will be more and uh, and all the secondary beams I've just denoted uh, in this uh, distance here. Let's see if I write, have any second like here. I've denoted this distance for this cantilever beam. And uh, another mistake uh, some people make that uh, if you have a cantilever portion and you have a wall above it, you have to give a beam. So here, so okay. So that's why. And uh, this beam is not given in many cases. So this beam is should, should be given. Okay, so that's a uh, thing. So this uh, look look at this beam layout again. I had to keep, keep this as simple as possible. If your beam size goes more than 450, then in, there will be side face reinforcement, means that it is a deep beam and it will have side face reinforcement or skin reinforcement along the middle portion. So this is the largest size which I'm giving, getting in the beam. And uh, this is it pretty much. And you can see this there, we have this, you know, your beam sections. So if you just uh, look into, uh, you know, detail uh, as well as there's the beam uh, sections here. Uh, let me just uh, show you any one of the beam sections which have an extra bar. So this, this has an extra bar as you can see. Uh, the extra bar's length is probably mentioned here. Uh, suppose we have to give the bottom bar so 700 from this column 700 from this column and then this portion we have the extra bar and uh, in the extra top also mentioned so uh, sizes are easily mentioned rather than uh, in some drawings you can see the l by 3 or 0.3 l 0.25 l rather than if you just mention the size or mention the length then it is very easy to execute and there is more possible that it will be executed so you have to provide your drawings like this right so uh, and then we have the slab and uh, we have gone for the most common arrangement of the slabs, which is the crank tree bar. So you know the crank tree bar is provided in alternatively. So you can see the alternatively it is provided and or not, again, I've not mentioned L by three or something. I've again totally mentioned the length here. So A and B, okay, A and B details we'll find later. What is the reinforcement and uh, spacing of this? Uh, you can see 10 mm bar at the place 200 center to center. So effectively it will be 100 center to center because it's placed alternatively. A and B, so it will be effectively 100 center to center and distribution bar 10 mm at 200 top. And there is a section here, okay, bar one, bar two, okay. And this distance A and distance distance is also A. And these distances, all these distances are mentioned here, 1600 like this from this side, 16 from this side. And in the cantilever portion, we will have a double mesh of 10 mm uh, at 800 both ways. So, so this will be the uh, reinforcement. And you can see, you can, uh, you can just visualize this very easily. Any person who have just worked in uh, any side, they have very basic knowledge about it. They can easily execute it. They don't have to calculate. They can easily execute it. And actually in all big projects, you have uh, this amount of detail or more than this also, you will find. But uh, in residential projects, especially, uh, we have less number of detail, but but uh, you know, if you have less number of detail, some things are not executed properly. But if you give this much detail, then it's there we have more probability of it being executed okay so this is a first floor slab and then we'll have, we have the headroom slab as well the portion of the staircase where you have the slab here so this is it and then we have the uh, you know staircase detail you can see how the staircase uh, this this staircase detail has been mentioned now this portion extra top bar has been mentioned and this is the lapping length 450 uh, here for the 10 mm bar laps and this is the uh, another type of staircase into two sections of the same staircase even a a b p so in detail we have the uh you know sections of the staircase and we have the section of the dog leg staircase as well so rise and tread tre type staircase is used uh in my experience we have you know this uh, another type of staircase as well you might have seen that uh it is like this like this so so this type of staircase also is called uh, you know sorry in this is the waste step type staircase rise and tread staircase staircase is also used but in rise and tread type staircase you need to really have good uh, shuttering material and good quantity uh, quality of labor also otherwise you get a lot of honeycombs after casting so in my experience uh if you go for a waste step staircase then it is uh, you know you know better and easier to execute but if you have a skilled mason then you can also go for the rise and tread staircase as well but you know you know i uh, recommend if you are going for a general residential building go for the waste lift type staircase instead 
okay so <clears throat> this is it and then we have the details of the chaja uh, portions when you have the window that the chaja is given to prevent the rainfall and we have the lintel you know details here so you can see this details are pretty simple but when you uh, you know set to make it then you have to prepare this format and for every you know other uh, structural drawing uh, you have to make this particular format so people when uh, they are uh, you know young engineers civil engineers when they are interested in structural design they run stat pro etabs tecla and then they go into this field but very important thing is the uh, you know this presentation when you have clients when you are working as a freelancer or you are you know owning your own company to give this output to the clients properly to ultimately because the client is seeing your output so work on your output and make the output as better as possible and you have seen my format uh, of the providing structural drawing currently and if you uh, if, if you suggest any improvements that which can be made in this uh, structural drawing format itself you can suggest and i'll be happy to add because there is always uh, something to uh, learn uh, from everyone okay and there is always a scope of improvement which i believe so uh, that's why and I try to prepare this format and again i'll say this when you are working in the structural engineering field the presentation of the output learning of the output is very important and yes this is a you know this is a little bit boring thing uh doing all these things but uh, you know mainly the portion of the layout and all i will minor mistake and uh you know this uh, doing uh, a lot of things at the site so you have to do it very carefully and uh, it's an interesting topic if you learn and you can uh, have a lot of freelancing opportunities as well as an opportunities in many uh, companies or structural consultancy firms as well okay so thanks for watching the video make sure you comment anything uh, you find found interesting about this uh, format and if you want to give make any suggestions also you can comment below okay thanks bye bye keep learning bye bye